Okay, so let's look how we can run scenarios on the fly, and this is really all about using those slider controls on the facilitator iPad. Really useful for the deteriorating patient type scenarios. I'm going to use ALSI Welcome as my base scenario here. So I'm just going to tap on Start Scenario and turn on the uh, student iPad. As you can see at the moment, it's a blank screen, so let's change that. And this can mimic somebody adding ECG leads onto a patient. So we'll tap on the grey box here, turn it blue, and now we've got an ECG trace. If you want to mimic them attaching a saturations probe, we just tap on the saturations grey box, and that goes blue as well. So you can see that they've now added a saturations probe. If they want to take a blood pressure, that's easy to do. What the student would most likely do is tap on one of these two buttons here, NIBP Start or NIBP Auto Start. Let's do NIBP Start. And, and you can hear that uh, sound of a blood pressure going up that's being mimicked. And you can also see that there's an animation there with that green bar coming back down. When that comes back down to the beginning, you'll see that an, a non-invasive blood pressure will pop up. And there it is. If we want to change the blood pressure reading, all you do is you move the slider of the blood pressure up. It's changed that number, you press go. But the non-invasive blood pressure has not changed yet. What the student would have to do is either tap on an IBP start again or wait for the auto start timer. But what you can do as a facilitator is you can make that blood pressure go over quickly. Once you can double tap go, and that sends the blood pressure over. Another way to do it, so let's just change the blood pressure again and press go, is to go into tools and either send NIBP or you can start NIBP remotely. And there we go, it's off running. Another thing you can do with blood pressure is change the diastolic and systolic. And you do that by unclicking the link and now you've got two sliders. So now you can move this slider up, move this slider down, press go, let's send that over, and now you can see you've got a widened pulse pressure to sort of mimic aortic regurgitation. Let's put that back again. So now let's see how we can use trending. We can move the heart rate up, and we can trend that over, say, 20 seconds, or 30 seconds, and we press go and you can see the heart rate will start to go up gradually. We can also drop the saturations down, and we can do that over, say, 45 seconds, and you'll hear the saturations dropping. But if you want to stop a trend at any point, let's say they put oxygen onto the patient, you can press and hold go, and now that's stopped the, the trending at that certain time point, and if you want to now move up, with the, the saturation is up, you would trend over 10 seconds and press go, and up comes the saturations again. To change any of the waveforms on there, as we've already seen, you tap on the images, and that goes into various different waveforms that we have here. And you have to press go to confirm, and we can do the same with pulse, with poor perfusion and we can do the same with an arterial line trace as well. And with an end tidal CO2 trace, we can change that as well. With end tidal CO2, something to note is that if you do choose end tidal CO2, and now we've got it at being 35, you have to increase the respiratory rate up to allow it to actually start drawing the actual wave that you want with end tidal CO2. So that's a very important thing that you have to remember with that. And that's basically how you can use all of these sliders to, do, to, ch to change a scenario on the fly.